Hello and welcome to, I guess, an Erica Barker photography slash Photoshop tutorial. Um, today I'm going to show you guys a really quick uh, thing that you can do to wedding photography to kind of give it a dreamy effect. Now I know some of you Photoshop pros might be a little bit turned off when I say dreamy in a, photo, uh, in a photograph because a lot of people out there do it um, bad, really bad. So uh, if you guys are new to Photoshop, you may want to really exercise uh, playing around with this a bit before you show it to the client and before you show it onto the blog because there's many times I've learned a, a new effect in the past when I was new to Photoshop and I would come back to it maybe a week later after looking at other people's photos, uh, other photographers uh, photographs and I would be like wow I totally went a little bit too far on that effect so the way you want to think about it is you need to keep your effects very subtle, incredibly subtle because honestly when you're putting an effect on some on top of some content what you're telling yourself and your audience is the content is not strong enough by itself and you need to add this effect to make it stand out and hold the audience's attention so we definitely don't want to do that we always want to make sure that we're taking a good photograph off the bat and then we want to just make sure we're applying a subtle effect so the effect that I'm going to show you guys is this guy right here so we're going from um, this uh, this photo right here to this photo right here so we're kinda giving it like a little bit of a dream effect now some of you Photoshop pros may know what this effect is it's just simply a, a screen um, duplicating a layer setting it up as a screen and doing a Gaussian blur however I'm gonna cover a few extra things so that way people don't go a little bit too overboard on this effect. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this photo and we're going to jump over into Photoshop. Alright, so here we are. Alright, so we have our background layer over here. And let me just drag our actions. Uh, we'll just hide that guy for now. And what I'm going to do, um, the way I'm going to roll with this is a lot of people kind of know the basics of Photoshop already. So I'm not going to go into where shortcuts are or where you're going to go into the menu. I'm just going to say duplicate the layer and we're going to duplicate the layer. So what I'm going to do here is hit Command J, duplicates the layer. If you need to remember that, Command J dupes away. Alright, so from here what we're going to do is right over here where we can uh, change our blending mode. We're going to change this to screen. And there we go. Looks really freaking bright. Holy cow. But that's okay. That's all right. Now the next thing we're going to do is go into filter, click on blur, and go into Gaussian blur. All right. So there we go. Kind of looks like a dream almost. Like, wow, this is what I was dreaming about last night. Um, yeah, that kind of looks good. We can kind of, if we adjust it back, oh, it looks really weird. So... We kind of want to make sure that our radius is kind of tweaked out pretty high. So uh, let's see, that's a, uh, that's about right. We can kind of tweak around with this a little bit less. Uh, yeah, it looks good right around 62. All right, so this is going to depend on how big your photograph is. Um, you probably would be in the low digits of your radius if you have like a image that you found off the internet that's really small. In this case, this image is 16.7% right now. You're viewing it at 16.7%. So this is a large photo. This is a large file. So that's the reason why we're all the way into 62.8. So you're going to have to kind of visually eyeball it. All right, so once you get that set, let's go ahead and click OK. All right, so this is a little bit too much. Uh, we definitely want to dial this back a bit. We just want it to be incredibly subtle and not dominate or take away from the moment. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take our opacity, dial this back, and this is something you're going to have to eyeball as well. So maybe 55%. Alright, so it's looking kind of good so far. That's the original. That's uh, what it looks like so far. All right, so something that I'm not liking is right in here where the dog is. 
it kind of looks like there's something wrong with the photograph rather than an actual effect. So what we want to do is we kind of want to make these details stand out because the details is what really gives our audience a sense of place and timing. Like his eyeball is a little bit washed out where his fur meets, uh, where his fur meets like um, from white to this uh, black color right here. It kind of just looks really weird. But right over here where the sunlight is coming through these branches, it actually looks really cool. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of take this effect out of some spots and leave them in others. Now, there's two ways of doing this. One, we can create a mask. Or two, we can just simply erase from part of this layer. So just for the sake of timing, I'm just going to erase from part of this layer because it's really quick. If I wanted to start over, I can just... Uh, create a new layer or I can just go back in my history because what we're going to do is just remove part of it very fast. So I'm going to go over here into my um, eraser. Okay, um, what we want to do here, oops, sorry. What we want to do here is we want to make sure that we select the brush that's kind of soft from our basic brushes. Um, 100 looks pretty good. Let's maybe dial up the size to about uh, about 400. Uh, let's dial it up a little bit more. And uh, dial that back just a tad bit. Alright, and we want to make sure that hardness is set to 0%. So that means it's going to be very soft, it's going to blend, it's not going to have any hard edges on the brush. Okay, once you get that set up, now we can erase away. So what we want to do here is we don't want to start erasing quite yet we actually want to adjust the opacity of the eraser and we're just going to dial this back maybe to about 60 percent so that way we're not taking everything away this actually cr allows us to kind of blend a little bit better and doesn't kind of where the soft edges meet um well it sounds like i'm going on a ramble here but it kind of just uh when we're erasing something it we're not taking away too much and it's just like your eyeball is like it isn't all of a sudden looking at this and being like wow there is a sudden change there it just kind of nicely blends so yeah we're just going to take a little bit right over in here off of the dog okay maybe off his paw right there okay so we have some details over here like this little vase so we're just going to slightly remove that and you kind of like remove some stuff in here all right all right just we have some details over here like her, like a skirt and a boot. We just want to slightly remove that. Right, right off the hair a little bit. All right, definitely don't want the couple washed out here. The scenery is fine to keep it. These guys over here look pretty good. Maybe this guy over here, we'll just kind of dial it back. Her legs right here. So it's going to take a little bit of you guys eyeballing it. And that's where the trick to uh, be being a really good touch-up artist comes into play. I mean, you can learn all of these Photoshop tricks. You can download actions for it. You can set up actions, but each photograph is going to be unique and it's going to have its own treatment. Now, you don't want to do this trick on like you know something like advertising or uh, like photojournalism or something like that. You definitely <laughs> about the only medium that I can think of you want to do this effect is probably in wedding photography. So, but you know there. It really depends. It's it's up to you. So, all right, just gonna take a little bit from there. Maybe we don't want so much over here, and a little bit over there. I'm just going to check the opacity one more time. Yeah, I'm just gonna drop that back to maybe 40%. So, like I said, it's just going a lot of uh, back and forth, back and forth, and just double checking things. All right, we're just gonna go in here. Probably pull this guy off. And that's pretty much it. So once you guys get everything set up, it should pretty much look like this is before and this is after. Before, after. So I hope you guys enjoyed uh, learning how to do this easy, quick, uh, dreamy effect, which is awesome for wedding photography if you don't go overboard, which is incredibly easy to go overboard. So something I would recommend you guys do is do the effect before you go to bed, or once you edit your photos, wait a few days, come back, and see if you uh, see if you agree with the effects. Sometimes, uh, probably like 
six times out of ten, I'll look at an effect and I'll be like, wow, I really went overboard on that. And I'll have to go back and tweak it down a little bit. So it's just uh, part of the game, part of psychology, I guess, of it. But uh, you guys will learn. Just it takes a lot of practice like anything else. All right, until next time, I'm Erica Barker, and I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial.